here from Lemon Crafty Fiber Arts. A few weeks ago, Mama Llama Kayla here on YouTube, if you're not familiar with her channel, go check her out. That's the name she uses uh, for her channel. She's very, very talented. She's a very sweet lady. Um, she called me out and wanted me to do some tips, limb knitting tips, and because of everything going on in my life at the time, I hadn't got around to it till now, so I wanted to do it today, and my tips are going to be on how to work with looms that have cotter pin or metal pegs, such as this cottage loom, and I'm actually going to be going over, um, this loom is a half gauge where the cotter pin pegs face you with the eye facing you, and then I have this one that is a quarter gauge where the pegs are turned sideways and they're smaller and I'm going to show you how to work with both of these that these are tips now I'm, I'm not speaking for anybody else I'm speaking for tips that I've learned on my own because I went straight from um, boy looms round looms to a cottage loom with cotter pin pegs and it was a little bit of adjustment there is a little bit of a learning curve working on these looms but they're awesome awesome looms they they produce beautiful fabric um, very professional looking and nice pretty stitches a lot of good stitch definition if you ever try these looms they're made very good quality solid wood uh, heirloom type quality now this one is still in its natural state this one I painted because I had kind of nicked it a bit with my uh, pick so I wanted to protect it you can see a little bit of the places here and I wanted to protect it so I painted it and put some uh, coating on it to protect it but, and I'm a little more careful with this one. This was one of the first uh, quarter gauges I had ever bought, uh, a scarf loom, six inch scarf loom. But what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you a few little tips I've learned. One of them is the pick you use. When Cottage Looms sends you one of their looms, you have a choice whether you want them to send you a pick or not. If you don't have a pick that has a sharper tip, I would suggest asking them to go ahead and send you a pick with it this is a boy pick that came with my boy looms and you see it is duller to me just my opinion when you're working on one of these looms with a smaller weight of yarn like four and under or maybe three and under this one is going to frustrate you this one works better because it slides down in there better grabs the yarn pull it over this one sometimes you're kind of fishing now if you can do it with this pick that's fine i'm just saying that for me for my own opinion and my own experiences a sharper tip pick works better with cottage looms and cotter pin pegs or any loom with cotter uh, any loom with metal pegs so one thing that i've learned is when you're working with these looms for one thing, whether you realize it or not, if you're working with looms that have plastic pegs, even though you may think they don't have any give, they still have a little bit of give because they're plastic. You don't really realize it, but they do. And it depends too, as I've done a video recently, it depends on the circumference of the peg to itself. But this metal peg is not going anywhere. There's no give there. So when you wrap your yarn around that peg, it's going to not give, and if you put any tension on it much whatsoever, it's going to be too tight the next row to flip your loops over. So you really have to be very mindful of your tension on these looms. If you're a tight knitter, you need to learn how to uh, wrap looser. So... You want a little leeway there. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So what I do is when I start these looms, I wrap one or two pegs at a time. I don't wrap several. Why? Because if you start wrapping around like this, you see how that's pulling? pulling? When you go back, you're going to have too much tension there. And it's going to be hard to flip those loops over the more rows you do it's just easier to me to wrap a couple of pegs at a time or one at a time and then knit them off that way you can control your tension better you see there's not not a lot of pull there 
and flip it over. Now you can flip it over different ways. You can flip it over pulling in from the bottom like this, or you can go over like this. Now when you flip it over the eye of the peg here, it's easier, if you flip it over like this, you're gonna to have to cover that whole area across that eye at the top. If you flip it over to the side, like that, it slides over much easier. So those are some things I've learned with these pegs. And you can flip it over like this, but flip it over to the side. It doesn't really matter. You see what I'm talking about? See, see the tension that I've got there? I've got a lot of tension trying to flip it over that whole eye. But if you flip it over the side, it's looser. And then you have to actually tighten it up a little bit yourself. But just remember, when you're tightening up your stitches if you're, as you're going along, don't tighten them too tight. And then when you go back, it's much easier. See, I'm going over the side. Now watch this. I'm going over the top. It's creating more tension. See that? And see it even popped off. So that's the problem you're going to have if you try to go over the top and cover this whole width of that eye up there. Always try to go over like that. If you're doing a purl, when you lay your work down here to purl, don't pull on it. Don't put any tension on it. Just lay it down there. Barely lay it down there. Pull it up. Take the old loop off. Put the new loop back on. And just barely hug that peg. Don't tighten it up too tight. I just cannot stress enough how tension matters with these pegs. Too much tension. You just barely land the... the yarn across, down, however you're doing it. Now another thing I have found, make sure you keep your yarn right here or just a little bit below, no more than half. I try to keep mine about three quarters up. If you let it lay down around the base of the loom here at the bottom, the base of the pegs, you're going to have more tension pulling it up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go back this way. Okay, let's push them down. Okay, watch this. Two, you're going to be hitting the bottom of your loom, and you may end up with problems like this, where you're digging into your loom, because this pick is sharper, and you don't want to mess up your loom. All right, we've got this down here at the bottom. Look at that tension. There's more tension when you let it float down there at the bottom, and look at how this is pulling... The yarn up. Now I've I've wrapped this kind of loose, so it's not showing as much tension as it would be. But if you're confident, and see, so you look look at this when you wrap around the peg. Watch this. If I pull like that, and then do this, that loop's gonna be tight when I go back to my next my next row. So you have to be mindful and just lay it across like that. Even if you have to rest your fingers across the other pegs, it's fine. If you're doing a flat panel, and then pull it over. Okay, and then you can kind of check your tension. Don't pull on it, though, because if you pull on it, you're going to tighten up the stitch next to it. But you can kind of just stick your, your pick, pick down in there and kind of see if it's loose or tight or whatever. But there's, there's some tips I have. Make sure you keep those loops up as high as you can and then wrap around up above it. Don't push them all the way down here because then you're going to create too much tension and the more rows you do, it's going to get tighter and tighter where you won't even be able to eventually knit these loops off. So that's the tips I have for this one. Now, the quarter gauge is pretty similar, but with it, because you don't have the eye up here to kind of keep the yarn from slipping off, you'll see what I'm saying in a minute. Do the same thing. Wrap the yarn around one peg at a time or a couple of pegs. Don't watch your tension. Keep them loops up high. 
flip it over. Now, see, you can flip it over the top of the eye here because it's facing this way, and you're getting just the side. So you you got the same amount of space here across the peg all the way up. It's just a maybe a little higher wider up here, but not much. So what I like to do is, if I'm doing a flat panel, I kind of like to hold my finger back here and keep it from slipping off sometimes. I'll kind of like put my finger back there just a little bit and keep it from slipping off. But it's pretty much the same premise as the other pegs that are turned the other way. And you can also go in from the bottom and flip it over. Actually, I think that works better for me. Everybody's different. It doesn't matter. Just the main thing is your tension, where you keep your yarn, don't let it ride down around the bottom of the base of the, the loom or the pegs. And you won't have problems flipping over. Let's go back and see how hard these are to flip over now. Okay, I'm not putting any tension. See there? Look at there how easy that is. Very easy. Now, of course, once you get used to it, you won't be going this slow. You'll pick it up faster. But I'm going to show you something here in a minute. If I try to wrap several of these pegs at one time, now it won't be quite as tight because I've been keeping my tension loose. But if I wrap these pegs, you see, when you wrap around that peg, that peg has no give. It's metal. It ain't going to go nowhere. It ain't going to give to the left, right, back, forth. It ain't going to give it all. It's just going to sit there. So when you wrap like this, that yarn, it's just nature for that yarn to become a little bit taut. You see how, you see there? It's harder to pull over than if you just wrap one or two at a time. Watch your tension, knit it off. I hope this helps some of y'all that have issues with working with cotter pins. I know some people tell me that they're a little afraid of them or they're weary of them because they're afraid they'll have tension problems. And if you're doing like a figure eight, let's do a figure eight here. Um, well, I don't have it set up right. I guess we'll have to go backwards. Uh, when you're doing a figure eight, just make sure you keep those loops. Sorry, I got off focus. Make sure you keep those loops up here at the top when you flip them over. And you can do either way. You know, you can flip over one side and you can turn your loom around, or you can turn it like this. I like to turn mine like this instead of flipping my loom around. It just depends on the person. So just make sure watch your tension when you when you're double knitting too. But that's my tips for cottage looms or any kind of looms that have cotter pin or metal pegs. And remember, you know, if you have these smaller pegs, hold your finger back there to kind of hold your yarn to keep it from coming off. I know a lot of times, uh, like with kiss looms, sometimes the yarn will pop off and it helps to hold the finger back here to hold as you're wrapping. Hope this helps, y'all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.